Hello, family. Welcome back to the Ebony Odyssey. My name is Jermango Long, and I am a servant of the Most High God. I really appreciate you for coming along, and as always, enjoy the journey. Today's message is titled, The True King and Queen of Africa. The True Kings, I guess, and Queens of Africa. Where are they? Right. It's a thought that I have in my mind today. So, man, just bear with me. I hope it don't take too long. But y'all know I'm long winded, man. This thought that comes in my head is at this time, if you were to go to Israel, would it be a land flowing with milk and honey? Right. I just think about how God has said certain things and they come to fruition later on. You think about how he said that children will be scattered. But before that, he said he would give them a land of milk and honey. And now you see the children scattered all throughout the world. But in every place they are, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. And being here, you can see the milk and honey flowing even more so uh, from the crops that grow. Uh, but we still are disobedient and dishonor God, right? So when I get to this topic about the kings and queens of Africa, because we love to say those things, but you know, we don't even have a clue what they mean. Queen has to be married to the king uh, and the king has to be appointed by God. But my support scripture that I've been reading through and I just have to share it. It's a couple guys. It's Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14 through 18. So let me actually read these to you. I hope you can bear with me, but please, if you do, I think you'll get a little bit out of it. When you enter the land that Yahweh, your God, is giving you and you possess it and settle in it, should you say, I will set over me a king like all the nations that are around me. You may set, yes, set over you a king that Yahweh, your God, chooses from among your brothers you may set over you a king. You may not place over you a foreign man who is not a brother person to you. Only he is not to multiply horses for himself and he is not to return the people to Egypt in order to multiply horses. Since Yahweh has said to you, you are not to return that way again. And he is not to multiply wives for himself that his heart Heart not be turned aside and silver or gold he is not to multiply for ex him in excess but it shall be when he sits on the throne of his kingdom he is to write himself a copy of this instruction in a record when he sits on the throne he is to write himself a copy of this instruction in a record. What instructions are we talking about? We're talking about the Torah. We're talking about the first five books of the Bible, right? We're talking about Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, Leviticus. We're talking about those books. And they probably ain't in the right order. So this may be long and I may have to break this into a couple different uh, sections. But I want to break this down as quickly as I can. When you enter into the land your God is giving you. Where's the land? We say it's Israel. Is Israel flowing with milk and honey? Are the resources there plentiful? Are the grapes huge? No, but Africa is. So did Yahweh just give you this land? You just caught on to it later on down the line? Because these people are spread all throughout. They have an abundance of natural resources right here in this land. And guess what? Who, who gave it to us? God. And guess who's possessing it? And guess who is settling in it? His people. But guess what they do? We had to set a king up over us, right? We want to be like the other nations, right? So we set that king up over them, among the brothers around us. But slowly but surely, we keep taking these outside influences and we let them in. And now they control us. They're doing everything for us and they're, and they're directing where we're going. It's coming. The people who are here see it. The people who are here see that it is a foreign you know, presence now. And they're directing the way these people are going. They don't have their best interests uh, or intentions at heart. But guess what? They are getting things done for them. So any little bit helps. And because that little bit is helping, they are flowing in the wind where these person, these people or these nations are blowing them. But we have these people that's in charge. But what do they do? 
Go to 16. He is not to multiply, but all the people that become in charge of nations, especially these black nations, they multiply things for themselves. It says horses here. We could say cars. We could say houses. If we could say ventures for themselves, not the people, because that's what it's really talking about here. And he is not to return the people to Egypt in order to multiply horses. Man, he ain't supposed to be selling off his people and he ain't supposed to be calling them back to a place and taking advantage of them also to multiply his dollars, right? No one was supposed to sell these people off or lie to them and get them to come back just to take advantage of them. Some places are doing that. This is how the people feel in some of those places. Let me say it the correct way. That's it. Yahweh has said to you, we're still in 16. You are not to return that way again. Who was doing that to us? The, the nations that we were in captivity to, they were doing that to us. So why would we do that to our own people? We are a stiff necked people. Yahweh has told us the most high is literally giving us what we're going to do later. And we're just figuring it out today. Here we are. We jump to 17. And he is not to multiply wives for himself. Now you see polygamy popping back up. And over here, man, a man can have two and three wives. You know, I even heard a president say something similar when she said, hey, y'all need to get two or three women to take care of. But what does that do? His heart will be turned aside because it's a certain culture who takes two and three women. And guess what? They are focused on that type of lifestyle right these people branch off of one of the children of the most high but they were not his chosen people so they war against god's chosen people if you don't know what i'm talking about maybe you read more and you'll figure that out we'll talk about that maybe another time as well but multiplying wise for himself his heart is being turned aside man it is hard nobody what does it say a man can't take fire to his uh chest and not be burned Guys, you know, going through marriage and women going through marriage, you know, it's up and down. It's like a wave. You ride up on one wave and you ride down on another and it gets difficult. Uh, but if you are ever tempted and pulled away, how hard is it to come back? You're living this sinful life where you get the benefits on one end. And the family on the other end. You should be able to get the benefits in the family on the same end. But one end, you're fooling around, right? You could end up having a child. You could end up ruining someone else's life because that's all you're doing. You're ruining your life. You're ruining someone else's life. Don't cross that line. You know, that was one of the things I tried to pride myself on. Not crossing that line. Not engaging in some act with some female that would take me away from my family or cause my family any harm or break up my family, right? That's me personally. That's what I'm doing because guess what? Nothing is more important to me than my family, right? So let's not multiply wives. Not, let's not multiply headaches because my wife is, is the love of my life and she a headache. Think about that. But anyway, you know, don't multiply situations that could cause you trouble that could cause you loss, that could cause you problems that you don't need to have. We move here. And silver or gold, on in 17, and silver or gold, he is not to multiply for himself to excess. It's all right to make a profit. It's all right to be successful. But see the greed that comes in? Because what does it say? To excess. Some people still kill and destroy to get excess. God says be content and we won't excess is something about the greed of man i mean i don't come from a place of lack i don't need to be greedy everybody else does not have the same mentality i would hope that god's people who are coming back to him that's returning to him have this mentality of abundance and not lack because that lack mentality it causes people to sin it causes people to do evil it causes uh people to harm their brother and sister and take advantage you can't be in a place of lack because if you are you're trying to multiply silver and gold in excess for yourself 
and you can never be focused on loving people the way God wanted you to love people, to take care of people. Some people become so obsessed with the excess, they can't even focus on their family. How many people don't care for their families properly because they are in love with the silver and gold? They're in love with it to excess. If we could be content, it's no reason we can own all the things that we have. I'm sitting here and I'm watching people build brick by brick. They're owning what they have. They're content with the things that they have. And guess what? What happens when they uh, continue being content? God keeps adding more. And they expand and expand and expand. But it's not a greed associated with it. Everybody wants nice things. We can't want it just for excess. Guess what? You know, we used to talk about investing. And, you know, you're just putting excess money in the bank. It's drawing that uh, regular rate of return, right? That that little small interest rate we, we're going to get on our money. But if you was to take it and you was to invest it in something that yielded a better return, you would get more for your money, right? It's like, you know, even the talents, right? You know, the, the person with the one talent, you could at least put it in the bank. But everybody else, they did more with it and created more opportunities with it. Now, we're not trying to do it to excess, but we're trying to bless what God has given us. We just need to be mindful that we don't we don't pierce ourselves through, right, with the the desire for the excess. But the most important thing of all in this reading, in 18, it gets here. But it shall be when he sits on the throne of his kingdom. Every man should be a king in his own home. That home that the king is king of consists of a queen and maybe a couple of princes, maybe a couple of princesses. But that man has his own kingdom. And what it says, he is to write himself a copy of this instruction in a record. He's supposed to write a copy of this word, right? And he's supposed to do this in front of the people that are supposed to keep him spiritually mature. That's going to hold him spiritually accountable. Because this is supposed to be before the presence of the Levitical priests. But all of that, 19, I didn't read that before, but 19, check it out. It is to remain beside him. And he is to read out of it all the days of his life. In order that he may learn to have all for Yahweh, his God, to be careful concerning all the words of this instruction and these laws to observe them, that his heart not be raised above his brothers. I don't want to just keep going on because if you don't understand the power that the scriptures have, and I'm sorry, I'm just preaching, I guess, today, but this right here is nothing but gold. And you want to understand how everybody yells kings and queens and they don't have no understanding of the most high God. He appoints kings and queens. He raises one up and puts another down. We got to get in the mindset of being kings and following his word. This right here, when it says it is to remain beside him, walking hand in hand, my right hand man, as we say, right? Um, that's a little old school, but my right hand man, this book is supposed to be beside me. I am to read it out or read out of it. All the days of my life, every day. Think about that. All the days that you have in this world, in this existence, we are supposed to be checking in with God because we need to learn to be in awe of him. How much he has given us, how much he has blessed us, how he has turned the tables on our enemies that had come against us. God did that. Yahweh. He did that. We need to be careful. What does it say in 19 concerning all the words of his instructions, the laws to observe them. But we don't even understand that our heart is not to be raised above our brothers. And when we come to the continent, it's hard for some people to come here and be humble. 
And it's hard for some people that are here not to feel inferior. Some people put you on a pedestal above them and I'm fighting tooth and nail to show them that we are equal. I've had more opportunities and I've worked harder to get what I want. Successful people are going to be successful and most people don't understand that. Whatever environment you put successful people in, they're going to be successful. But God gives you that opportunity to be a king and queen in your own home. And what you should do is keep his word beside you so that you can learn of him, that you can understand him, that you can glean the things that you need to keep your kingdom solid. Our kingdoms are crumbling because we don't keep his word beside us and because our heart is against our own brothers. And I look. I fall right in that category because I can't seem like I can't be with people because of their thoughts toward me. You know, I've lived with the thought that somebody would tell me that, hey, I want to do something better than what you're going to do. That's my journey here. And that rubs me in such a way that it's hard to get over. I can't I can't let it go. I'm moving forward, but we can't keep the same relationship because to think that I wouldn't do something that's going to honor God is my whole thing. Everything I'm doing is to honor God. And we want to do something better than what I can do. And we're supposed to be together. Oh, man. If I was to tell you the journey that I've been on here, I try to give you glimpses at it. But it's some real stuff that I've been through. And I enjoy the journey because it ain't supposed to be easy all the time. But this right here is the truth. And the reason we can't move forward as a people and be on one accord is because we have gotten bored with the word of God. It's not beside us. It's not behind us. It's barely even around us. People keep it at a distance. They talk Bible but they don't even believe. And that's our problem. We don't believe what we say. Like, man, you got to walk it like you talk it. You got to believe it like you read it. We have to do better. But hey, who am I? I appreciate you for coming along, family. And as always, enjoy the journey.